days, my folder gets firewall to enable SSL deep packet inspection. I need to get a copy of the certificate that the firewall is using to dynamically sign new certificates and trust it. Now the certificate that it uses by default is this one, Fortinet underscore CA underscore SSL. So what I need to do is download a copy of that to this local machine. Now I appreciate that this isn't going to scale very well but I'll cover that later on. So I've downloaded a copy of that certificate onto this machine. There it is there. So I need to get this machine to trust that certificate. Now it's a little bit more convoluted here on my Linux, Kali Linux client. If you're on a Windows client, you can simply double click the certificate, import it and manually place it in the trusted root certification authority store. Now I have to go up to a little bit extra links here on Linux, create an extra folder, put a copy of that in it, and then update the CA. Oops, CA certificates. This is Kali Linux, so it's based on Debian, so if you've got any Debian distros, the commands will probably be the same. And hopefully, there we go, that's done and updated. So this computer will trust that certificate. However, the more eagle-eyed of you will notice that I'm using Firefox. And Firefox maintains its own list of certificates, so I'm manually going to have to put this certificate with new certificates in port. Select the certificate. No, I downloaded it earlier. And I'm going to trust that to identify websites because that's exactly what it's going to be doing. Click OK. Click OK. OK, so my test client here now trusts Firewall to issue certificates. What I need to do is change the SSL profile that it's using. So if I go to the Firewall policy, that's inspecting my outbound traffic, my default web outbound traffic. And I edit it. You will see that by default, under SSL inspe inspection, it's doing standard certificate inspection. So it's just checking certificates against known bad actors and reverse DNS lookup in the common names and subject alternative names on them. Notice I've got antivirus turned on as well. That'll become applicable in a minute. So, I need to change my default certificate inspection to deep inspection. And the reason why it's got an error there is simply warning me that I've got to import the certificate on my clients, but we've already done that. Save that, and now you can see it's doing deep inspection. So, as I said, I'm already scanning for antivirus, so let's test whether antivirus is going to pick up an infected file if I try and, try and bring it in via HTTPS. If I go to icarth.org, which if you didn't know I do test virus malware signatures, go to downloads and scroll down specifically to the HTTPS SSL section and try and download something that's infected. Hopefully my firewall will now detect that and it has and it has blocked it. So we know that we're now inspecting traffic at HTTPS, or traffic that's SSL, protected. And just to prove it's not all smoke and mirrors, if I go down to log report antivirus, we should be able to see events have been logged on the firewall. There we go. To say that the icarcom.zip file has been blocked, where it came from, what action the firewall took, and more importantly, the fact it was blocked coming in over HTTPS. So we are now inspecting encrypted SSL traffic. Now that's all very well and good, but as I said earlier, it doesn't scale very well. So the problem is you're going to need to get that CA certificate onto your clients. Now if you've got a medium-sized deployment, 
the easiest way to do that would probably be with group policy. So just the same as I did earlier on on my Windows box. Now I'm going to download exactly the same certificate that I did for my test client. And my aim is to farm that out to all my computers and servers by Microsoft Group Policy. So there's my security certificate downloaded. If you want to open it up, you'll see it's valid for about 10 years. So this is not as, as crazy a procedure as you might think. If you've got a reasonably small deployment, it might be easier just to farm that out via group policy. So go to administrative tools, group policy management. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to link a new policy to the root of the domain. You might want to create a new policy and link it to whatever or you, your computers or servers are in. But I'm just going to link this to the root of the domain for demonstration purposes. Uh, I've prefixed it with CP because it's a computer policy. Click OK and then edit that policy that we've just created. So it's computer configuration policies, Windows settings, uh, security settings. I'll just drag that out of the way so we can see the bell. We want public key policies, trusted root certification authorities. Then over on that right hand side, right click, import. It'll select local machine by default because we're in a computer policy. Click next. And browse to the certificate that we downloaded from the firewall earlier on. There it is. Click next. By default, it'll say trusted root certification authorities. That's fine. Next. And finish. And there is our certificate that will be farmed out to all the computers that are affected by this group policy. Now, just to prove that's not mirrors, I'll force update group policy on this Windows machine, which I know is a Venga drawer, but it's, uh, it's still affected by that group policy. Now, if I open an MMC snap in and look at the local computer certificates under trusted root certificates, hopefully, there it is, it's automatically imported via group policy, the one that is on my FortiGate. Now, as I've said, that's not going to scale very well if you've got an enterprise deployment wish to prefer to use your existing PKI or Microsoft Certificate Services deployment. And to do that, you'll need to generate a sub-CA certificate from within your Certificate Services and put that on the firewall. So before you start, make sure that you have a subordinate certification authority certificate. You probably will do by default, but if not, just go to Manage, locate it on the list, and either issue this one or you can clone it and issue the clone. Some people don't like to issue the, the built-in templates. And then you just right click, pick it off the list, click OK and within a couple of minutes it would appear on the list here like that one has. But by default it should already be there. So the way I'm going to actually get this certificate is to use the web front end on my CA server. I'm going to select Request a certificate, advanced certificate request, create and submit a request to this CA. Yes, I want the website to be able to issue me certificates. So I'll change the template to subordinate certification authority. Now you need to pay attention to what you're putting in the name field here because that will be the common name on the certificate and it will need to be resolvable in DNS. Then you put a contact email in if you like and then fill in the company and location details as you see fit. So I 
set the defaults down here, but change the key length to 2048. 1024 is a bit small, small for modern standards. But most importantly, make sure Mark Keys is exportable is selected. And scroll down at the bottom and click Submit. Yeah. Install this certificate. Your certificate has been successfully installed. Now, confusingly, it puts this certificate in your local user container. So, if I have a look in certificates under there, there it is there. Now, the reason why we mark the keys as exportable is because now what we're going to need to do is export the certificate so that we can import it on the firewall. There it is, ready to rock and roll. So right click, all tasks, export, next, yes I want to export the private key, next, it'll select PFX by default, that's fine, next, you need to set a password for the PFX file so that when you import it on the firewall you need to supply this password so make sure you know what it is. And I'm going to change the encryption because at the minute it's just tripled as in SHA-1 to AES-256, SHA-256. Don't do that if you're running firewall 5.4 or earlier. And I'm going to save the copy of this on the desktop so it's easy to find. And I'm going to give it a sensible name. This will be the name that the FortiGate sees. Or will display in the table when you look at the certificates. You can change this when you get on the file if you want to. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Click Save. Next. Finish. Export was successful. So all being well, we should have our PFX file on the desktop. There it is. What we need to do now is get that into the firewall. So system certificates import, local certificate, and then select PKCS, upload, browse to your desktop and select the one that we've just exported, click open. Now there's the box where if you wanted to change the name that's displayed you could do, put in the, the password here that you set on the PFX file, click OK. and you'll see it listed under local certificates. Now we've got the certificate on there, what we need to do is create a profile for deep packet inspection that uses that certificate. So go to security profiles, SSL, SSH inspection, create new. Give it a sensible name that you'll be able to pick off a drop down list. I'm gonna call this one PNL deep packet inspection. And go down to CA certificate and you'll see by default the Fortinet underscore CA SSL one is selected. Change it to the one that we've just uploaded. I scroll down you'll see common settings in here. It's set to inspect all the common SSL secure protocols. You'll see things like finance, banking and health and wellness have been excluded. So you won't be looking up to you employees banking details if they do that at work click OK and there is our profile ready to be used in a policy so we've got a policy and objects firewall policy and locate the policy that is being applied to our outbound web traffic and edit it and scroll down to SSL inspection and change the profile that it's using from the default of certificate inspection to the new one that you've just created and click OK. To give that a test, if I go to my website here, which is protected by SSL, and do a refresh on it and have a look at the certificate that I'm seeing on the end client. You can see that that certificate 
is ultimately being signed by Test Bench CA, which is my internal CA, not a public authority, which it's actually signed on the live website. If you click View Certificate, you can see there that it was actually signed and issued by the FortiGate itself. So that's us up and configured. SSL inspection is on. HTTPS inspection is running. 85% of the traffic that you were missing before is now getting inspected. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to visit us www.peatnetlive.com.